All right, so I have something special in store for you. I'm not lying. I'm being that ass. This video is going to be a two-for-one special. All right, so boom. We're going to talk about the first time we cut our client here. And this was about a month and a half ago. He came to me. He was the last client for the day, I believe. I'm ready to revive him, okay? So as I'm staring at him, he's staring at me. He's staring at the mirror. We're all just staring at each other. I ask him, hey, pa, ¿qué tú quieres? And then he shows me his phone. It was something like that. He shows me a crop top of a person with straight hair. Okay, uh, but where, where do we go from here? <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, we can't do a crop top. Not with you, unless I'm out here doing freaking a chemical service on you and straightening your hair, which I'm not doing that. I tell him, okay, look, this is nice. This is nice. It looks nice. I could do this part. We could do this part, right? We could do the fade. But how about, you know, we, we, we give the top, something that's more you. All right, so right here, we have our client and he has grown out his hair for at least three months. I believe that's what it was. And if we take a close look at the front, we're looking a little light, but it's okay. Some of us deal with it too. He's not alone. So I'm looking at that area. I'm looking at the density around the top of the hair and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I still don't know why you asked for a crop top, but that's that's still that's over with. I just wanted, to, <laughs> I just wanted. To. So we can't go too short because again, if he's gonna be rocking curls, the moment that he wets the hair, curls, the hair shrinks. So if the hair shrinks and the hair's thin, my brother's not gonna be looking good. He's gonna look older. And the goal here is to make him look better and younger, better and younger. So. Mi gente, let's make them look better. So we continue picking out the hair, and after we pick out the hair, we're gonna start shaping it, okay? Lightly shaping it. We're not getting crazy with it. That's why you gotta sometimes check. You gotta dip your finger in the, in the afro to see how much space you have between the length of the hair and the scalp. Dip your finger. Don't forget to dip your finger, okay? But we are gonna keep a square shape, not going for a round. And again, he wants the crop top, right? Because the crop top follows a square shape. We're not going for a round shape. Well, I don't want him to look like he has a faux hawk, all right? So I'm going to make sure that the ridge is nice and full, that we maintain the square shape. And after we get all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start our bald guideline. We're not going too high, not too low, right in the middle, no C cup. And as I'm going about this, this um, system and I'm using the guards and I'm just getting a feel of the head shape, I quickly realized that our client here has a bit of a, um, a surprise in the back. All right, and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get to that in a minute. You know, right now, let's just focus on creating these guidelines, clearing them out. Again, guys, the ergos, that's what I've been rocking with about for two months now. I have two pairs. I keep them on rotation because the battery life is okay. It could be better, but I hear this is gonna be a solution. So we'll, we'll find out in a few months how that rolls out. But till then, we're rolling with two clippers that we have to keep on rotation. And right now, this side of the haircut, I, uh, I feel like it's not too bad. I feel like it's blending well. Um, I do realize it's a bit of a kink right above the ear. You know, it's nothing we can't handle, right? We've been here before. Uh, and while I'm here on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and start the fade on the beard. He told me that he wasn't too picky, so I brought that fade lower. He doesn't have a lot of fullness around the top area of the beard, so I brought it a little bit lower, so it made the fade pop. It's kind of crazy, because it looks like it's the same haircut if you flip it upside down. He has a fro on the beard and a fro on top, but I digress, I digress. Um, but on this other side, guys, He's got a bit more uh, challenging areas. Let's just say the kinks are real on the left side. The right side was I. Right. We made it work. But the left side had me going back and forth with the guard system a little bit. Had to use that comb quite often. Oh, and by the way, please use a comb. I would say at the point that you're using the number one all the way to like a three, you, you have to be using a comb with curly hair. Like it's just not the same. You're not controlling the hair as well as you would with a with a brush. At, I feel like if you're using a brush and you have good control of the hair, that's a hard bristle brush. And I don't want to do that to him. I don't want to do that to any of my clients. I feel like the people that use a hard bristle brush on a fade, they don't use it on themselves. So they don't know. They don't know. And let me tell you something. It hurts. 
Don't do that to your clients. Be more attentive. Oh, you know what we're gonna pay attention to right now? That area. You see that area? You see that kink? That's the challenging area, guys. You know, sometimes life brings surprises. And haircuts are like life. They bring surprises. And the surprise that our client brought us today was that area that we have to apply more pressure to. Look, if you don't make it work well around that area, it could literally ruin the cut if you don't know how to make it work. Uh, I've had certain situations where other clients where they'll want like a low fade or a mid fade and they have a few rolls in the back of their head and it's, it's tough, man. And I'm not saying this to roast him. It's not a roast. It's more so finding a way to express how this area can really be challenging for us barbers and how I want to just be able to share how to work with it. You know, the comment section gets out of hand I, and some people think that I'm out here trying to trying to make fun of people. No, it's not that. Oh, let's, let's steer away from this conversation and focus on what we're about to do right now. I wet the hair and I was looking for some products in the shop. I found some um, moisturizing creams and conditioning creams and all that and I just grabbed one of them and applied a little bit and I patted it down with the blow dryer and I started combing out the front hairs just a little bit and made sure I dried it a little bit more and then came back with the hairspray because we gotta lock it in before we edge it up guys remember that <laughs> All right, so the right side is looking nice. We're getting somewhere, but the left side is questionable right now. But look, this is the part of the, the service, guys, where you have to remember to just move on. I'm not saying move on and never come back. I'm saying move on. And later, after everything is starting to make sense, you come back and do your detail. Leave it. Leave it. If you love it, you got to let it go. Not completely, just, just for a little bit of time so you can get your thoughts together. So right now, you gotta get your mind off of the side that's looking questionable and focus on everything else. Right now, we're focused on the beer. We're gonna clear it out. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna make it look nice and neat and presentable, all right? So uh, when it comes to a client that has curly hair, I do not like using the shaver unless they ask for it and I always ask for it. It's pretty bad how often I ask for it. There's even times I've been cutting the same client over and over again and I still will ask. Yo, you want me to use a shaver or are we, we still good with the trimmers? Because there's, I don't know, I just feel like there's, there's times that they even consider it. And it's almost like unless you ask, they don't do it, you know, so make sure you ask. And this is not just in terms of the shaver. This is just anything um, like eyebrows right now. I asked him if he wanted to do eyebrows and he said yes. So guess what? I'm going to I'm, I'm letting him know that I'm willing to do these services that not all barbers are willing to do all the time, even though I mean, in Florida, you know, especially if you're Hispanic eyebrows is a must. Now, he did not want the super surprised McDonald's arches Puerto Rican looking eyebrows. No shots at nobody. I'm Puerto Rican myself. I'm just not following the rules right now. But he wanted them cleaned up just like how I need to clean them up eventually. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. And as I'm doing everything else, I ask him, because remember, always ask, do you want your hairline enhanced? I don't say, do you want some color? No, do you want it enhanced? He said yes, so we're enhancing it. I made sure that I took the oils off of the head with some aftershave and I'm just applying pressure with the Beam Team machine. I'm using the Sean Cuts Hair Enhancement card and we're applying full pressure. And I mean, I like to come back with some fibers just to kind of soften up the look. Uh, I feel like enhancements sometimes leave, they leave like a bit of a shine on the head and I want to make it look as natural as possible. And afterwards, I lock it in with some hairspray and I come back with the razor and I line it up. I used to use the razor before the hairspray, but I quickly found out that that burns. You don't want to use the razor and then hairspray. That's like, that's a sting. Okay. At this point, we did all we could do. Yes, we couldn't do a crop top for him. Look, Papa, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But it doesn't mean that you can't have your own little win, your own little victory of a curly crop top, even though there's no such thing. You have your own victory with this, I promise you. Because you came in looking some type of way, and I didn't want you to feel any type of way. So we applied pressure the best way we could, and this is what we came out with. <laughs> But it's not over, boys and girls, because remember, it's the two-for-one special. So, fast forward. About a month later, our client comes back. All right. 
He comes back. I'm thinking we're gonna do the same thing. So I had no plans to record. But guess what? Guess what? He said he wanted to cut it down. And that's where I have to tie in another story that's gonna make sense with this particular video. So, boom. A week ago, on a Thursday morning, I wake up. I get ready. I'm on my way to work. And I get to work. I open the door. And guess what? Just walked into the barbershop. Somebody left this here. And I don't know who did it. But whoever you are, it's about to get serious. It's a hair dryer, a hooded hair dryer. See, I have one in the last video that I mentioned to you guys, I mentioned that I bought a hooded dryer for Amazon and it broke within a week. Okay, cool. Didn't have one, haven't had one for quite a while, but one of my clients ended up seeing it and guess what? He bought us a hooded hair dryer. So a few days later on a Saturday, I ended up using it on our client. Yo, shout out to my boy Ty. Ty, thank you for buying the shop, the hooded dryer, because it came in clutch. It came in perfect. I ended up using it right away. All right, so boom, he tells me he wants waves. In my head, I'm remembering that he has thin hair, so we can't cut it to a two. We can't cut it to a one and a half. Remember, his hair is thin, so we have to keep it long so a five to me was a good way to start it off to check how it looked and after that i'm starting to create the shape obviously we're not going to do it exactly like the last cut we're going to bring the fade a little bit higher but not too much higher we still need the areas to look dark around the ridge i came back and changed my mind and switched it to a number four close on top and as you see it was a close call it was a close call you can kind of notice the scalp with the four all the way closed, but I knew that by the time we laid it down with some product, added some heat to it, there was a slight chance that it might be noticeable, but not really. It's still the risk worth taking, and at least we didn't cut it down as low as most people normally cut it down for a wavelength haircut. Now, we are continuing with the same concept. No C-cup gang, no C-cup gang. But the only thing we're going to change is that we're not gonna mess around with that kink in the back. It's not worth the headache. We're gonna go ahead and annihilate it. You do not exist in this haircut. The fade will be above you. So, after that, we continue with the fade. We create everything we need to create, but we're not gonna show it. We've already been there. That's not as important as what we have to conquer, and what we have to conquer is laying these curls down. All right, so after we drown these curls in foaming lotion, we pull out our medium hold brush, our medium bristle brush, and we are brushing the hair in the correct direction. It's not like we're brushing everything forward. Some sections need to be brushed in a different direction. Around the crown, we're brushing down. I did not mean to rhyme on that one. But look, as we're doing this, as we are brushing away, we have to pull out the secret weapon. What is our secret weapon, boys and girls? We have a few. The first one is that dryer, the hooded dryer that Ty brought the shop. Look, just stick around. It's about to get serious. You know what, guys? I think we should show Ty a little bit of appreciation for bringing that hooded dryer. And the only way we can show it is by smashing that like button. Show Ty that you appreciate him by smashing that like button. And for smashing that like button, here's a quick clip of Lorenzo sitting still while getting a haircut. All right, so the second secret weapon is the do-rag. And after the do-rag, we apply pressure with the wave cap. Now, in the past, I used to feel like I had to still tie the do-rag after putting the cap on top of the do-rag. And you know, something happened in the service where I thought to myself, why am I wasting time doing it? Have you ever tried tying the do-rag for somebody else? It is so awkward, it's weird. Like if you have spent time tying your own do-rag, you know how it feels. But when you do it for somebody else, something just doesn't feel right. It's not like tying somebody else's shoes. But when you tie somebody else's do-rag, when you, when you put the, it's, it's just weird. So, we're not tying do-rags anymore. We're just using a do-rag and coming back with a wave cap and making sure that it's nice and tight with the wave cap. Sometimes you have to flip it a few times to make sure it's a little bit tighter, but trust me, that's enough. And after we do that, it's time to put those waves in the oven. Now, I put it under the dryer for like 10 minutes. That's the part that gets a little bit edgy when it comes to this type of service. And mind you, I was a little bit behind for the day. Let's keep going with our client here, guys. Let's see how the waves are looking. Let's see how the waves are looking. 
Okay, it's looking a little bulky, but it's all right. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting away. It's better to have this type of situation than to have cut it too much and the haircut not make any sense after you take the do-rag off. So we're gonna go ahead, use the number one and a half at times and go with the grain, use the two against the grain. We're just testing it out, guys. I truly believe though that if I were to do this again on him, uh, I would bald it out, lay it down, put it under the dryer, and then fade away after this. I don't know. I just feel like it's worth a try. You know, don't be afraid to try different methods with your haircuts. Obviously, you don't want to do too many to the point where you have no system, but then again, how many times do I get to do this service at all? And another thing that I'm not giving up on, guys, is this color service, baby! Bring out the shooters! Bring out the shooters! Respect the shooters. We're not stopping. Applying pressure all day. Look, if you're an enhancement hater, I love having you around. Because, look, if they want it, why not have it? I'm not saying I do this on every one of my clients. If the enhancement service makes your client look better and you educate your client on how to maintain that look for a few days, because look, I hear it all the time. Oh, why would you do this? It's gonna come right off. Okay, it's gonna come right off if you don't tell your client anything. But if you tell your client, hey, look, tap that area and you can wash everything else. If you do everything right, if you use your hairspray, if you cleanse the skin correctly with aftershave right before you apply the enhancement, all this stuff will last a few days. But if you're a half-asser, let's just say, uh, of a barber and you don't educate your client properly, well, guess what, guys? It will come off. So how about this? Let's huddle up a little bit. Let's huddle up. Let's huddle up and talk about this. I want y'all barbers to educate your clients. Go above and beyond. Don't just be like, all right, sit on my chair, done. Get out of my chair, get out of my life. No, hey, yo mira pa, um, how about this? Papa, look, before you go home and wash this off, I want you to understand, if you scrub too hard, most of it, if not all of it's gonna come off. If you want it to last, which I know you do, look, all you have to do is tap it a little bit, scrub everything else, and it'll last a few more days, guaranteed. I use it a lot, maybe not right now, but I when I get it done, it does last. Oh, and another thing, if you're like in deep thought, don't scratch that area, because you're gonna end up with it under your nails. <laughs> Anyways, guys, look, our client came to us twice. I gave y'all the two for one special and you got it. If you haven't smashed the like button for this video by now, make sure you smash it before you leave. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed and make sure you stick around for the next videos that I drop on this channel. And until next time, I'm done doing this. I gotta go. Hasta luego.